Welcome back to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. We're talking about the Chicago Bears here today. We got 12 more teams that we have to get through before the regular season starts. And that will wrap up our over under win total predictions and also our power rankings. And then we'll be ready to place these bets. So with the Bears, Vegas has that set at six wins. I think that's an easy under bet. I'd be shocked if they got to five wins, let alone six or seven. And when you look at this roster, you can understand why. This is a roster that makes the Houston Texans roster actually look somewhat formidable. That's how bad we're talking here. And there's no way to sugarcoat it. There's no way to spin a good story here. There's no way you can defend the Bears. They just flat out stink. And for me, it's a little bit ironic because when, in my opinion, when they finally found a quarterback in Justin Fields, I think he has the talent to be very good. But you finally find a quarterback, but now you don't have anything else. But when they went to the Super Bowl, when they faced the Colts, they had everything else. They had a decent receiving core. They had one of the best special teams units in the league. Obviously, with Evan Hester returning all those kicks for touchdowns, he actually was the offense for them at times. And the defense was unbelievably good that year as well. But now they got a quarterback and they got nothing else. And it's at the point where I think Justin Fields is unfortunately going to go down the same road as David Carr, where you got the talent, you come into the league, you got all this hype, but then you get damaged, psychologically damaged, because you're going to be under constant pressure and you never get a chance to develop. And that's how bad the roster is, in my opinion. So when you're looking at quarterback, I think Justin Fields is good, but I think he's going to be running for his life. And as a quarterback, how you develop is you develop in the pocket. Being able to run is good, and Justin Fields has a lot of speed, and I think he can be very dynamic with the run game. But you have to really stand in the pocket, be able to stand in the pocket, and go through your reads and develop that way. And obviously, I don't think that's going to happen. And then – You just have to look at this offense and you'll see why. I mean, yeah, David Montgomery, he can carry a little bit of the load at running back, but there's not going to be run lanes blasted open for him. There's not going to be a run game established consistently, so they're not going to have play action. They're not going to have a consistent run game. The receiving core is not very good. I mean, when your best receiver is Darnell Mooney, that's not a good thing. Now, I know he went for 1,000 yards last season, and I do like him. I think he is a good receiver. I think he's a solid low-end number one to a high-end number two. I think he is that good. His route running has been getting a lot better. He's been getting open uh, safety outlet for the quarterback, if you want to call it that. But that's not enough because the rest of this receiving core is put together with, you know, number threes and number four type receivers. St. Brown, they got him from Green Bay. Um, And Keel Harry, obviously they give up. I think it was a seventh-round pick to get him. And I think that just shows you the desperation of how hard it is to get people to come to this team. And we know when Kiel Harry isn't very good, we've seen him get taken out of games very easily. I don't think he's going to be offering them much. Brian Pringle, I mean, barely utilized with the Chiefs. If he was any good, I think they would have taken advantage of him there. I mean, I know the Chiefs had a lot of weapons, but I really never saw anything from Brian Pringle that made me say, yeah, he can – be a starter or I can see him on another team that never happened. And then they spend their third round pick on uh, Vellis Jones jr. And, you know, to me, that's just a wasted pick. When you look at how bad this offensive line is, I don't know how you don't spend that third round pick on an offensive lineman. And at that point, even if you're just throwing darts blindfolded, I mean, again, this O line is so bad that, you know, you have to invest something in it and they did, but, the Bears invested two sixth round picks and a seventh round pick in their offensive line. Why even bother at that point? Doesn't make much sense to me. I mean, you really have to use your second, your first, second or third round pick if you want quality on the offensive line for the most part. And they didn't do that. And now we look at the O-line at its entirety. Uh, Cody Whitehair, I would say he's their best offensive lineman. I think he is legit good, but the rest of the O-line is absolutely terrible. They don't have a left tackle. And, you know, here we go again. They think a fifth round pick is going to come in and Braxton Jones and start and be great at left tackle. That's not going to happen. Sorry. Lucas Patrick at center, Sam Mustafer at right guard, Larry Borum at right tackle. That just sounds bad. So good luck. Justin Fields is going to be running for his life. 
teams don't have to really worry a lot about down the field with these receivers. And it's going to be really easy to blitz, stack the box, put on pressure. So the offense is going to be one of these things that sinks this team. Defensively, it's not looking much better. The defensive line's not very good, especially when they lost Belial Nichols. I was pretty disappointed in that. He's one of the dogs up front that actually was producing for this team, taking up double teams, wreaking a little bit of havoc up front, freeing up some of the pass rushers. And now they're not going to have that. They literally have nothing in the interior of this defensive line. And they're walking into another season where they think Robert Quinn's going to be dominant. And it's not going to happen. He's not going to be icing on the cake like they like to talk about. There's no cake to begin with. And there's no icing. So I don't know what they think is going to happen here. Robert Quinn will probably come in here and get six to eight sacks. That's what I see happening, if he can even stay healthy. And outside of Quinn up front on the defensive line, what else do they have? And at linebacker outside of Roquan Smith, what else do they have to work with? And we know that Roquan Smith has his fair share of injury issues as well. So the front seven to me looks like one of the worst units in the league. And then the secondary looks like one of the worst units in the league as well. Jalen Johnson, I guess he's all right. I, I don't, I can't even say he's a legit number one that can go on the outside. Uh, We know Eddie Jackson's decent at safety. He's pretty good. But, again, they're depending on young players to just come in. And, and obviously, they didn't even have a first-round pick. Um, So they're going to be depending on Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker. They're two second-round picks to come in and be legit right out of the gate. And we know that's not going to happen. So there you go. Uh, Pretty weak all the way around. And then, of course, the coaching staff – Uh, I think that's pretty bad as well. I can't even, you know, I I think this could be Lovey Smith level. That's how bad it could be with Matt Eberflus. I mean, that's where we're at, guys. So uh, for me, easy under. I think, you know, again, this could be a three, four win team. You know, it's going to be really bad. I don't see how they're going to be able to compete. You can look at the worst teams in the league. Like I mentioned, the Houston Texans and or the New York Jets or the Atlanta Falcons, and they're all better than what I'm looking at here with the Bears. So with that, guys, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. We'll be talking about the other teams and the NFC coming up here, and then we're steamrolling towards the regular season, and I'm looking forward to it.